Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the five life lessons that transformed me from a big dumb jock into someone with a master's degree in engineering. Let's go. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of backstory. If you've seen my other videos or if you've read my book, then you already know that I didn't really start out as someone who you'd pin as an engineer. Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. My grades were below average. I only made it to algebra in high school. I failed the college placement exam and I only scored in the 35th percentile on the ACT. During high school and the first few years of college, I was a complete jock. Swimming and water polo were my entire life. I lived to just work out and party on the weekends. Once it hits your lips, it's so good. The only reason I cared about my grades was because I had to keep them barely high enough to stay eligible for athletics. I mean, once I made it to college, the only reason I chose a major was because I had to in order to keep swimming. I started out as a communications major, by the way. Shout out to every other college athlete. But then you fast forward just a few years and I actually ended up graduating with a master's degree in mechanical engineering and a 3.8 GPA. So what happened there? What's the story between those two extremes? Which brings us to the five life lessons that transformed me from a big dumb jock into someone with a master's in engineering. Let's jump right in to life lesson one. A strong belief that you can basically do anything you set your mind to. Before you attempt to do anything, it's important that you at first believe in the possibility of your success. So as long as you choose to actively believe that you can succeed in whatever you're doing, you will often find your way to success because all of your potential excuses for failure tend to just evaporate. I personally learned this lesson at a pretty young age from just watching my parents. My mother was a high school dance teacher who worked her ass off for 12 years in order to have the means and experience to pursue her own dream of opening her own studio, which is exactly what she did. She opened her own dance studio and grew the business year over year over year into a huge success until eventually it enabled her retirement and the business is still going strong. Now my father was a similar but different story. He was a swim coach, one of the best in our state, and he grew multiple teams from the ground up and developed several swimmers to an Olympic level. And he actually invented and patented a couple pieces of training equipment to help assist him in training his students more effectively. And to make a long story short, he ended up partnering with a major brand and his products are now used by thousands of swimmers all over the world. So if you know anybody that needs to learn how to do breaststroke kick, these fins will do the trick. My dad invented these. Pretty freaking cool if you ask me. So it was through my parents' example, right? My mom relentlessly grinding and pursuing her dream until she made it a reality. And my dad, who wasn't really a, a trained designer or engineer, but he still had the confidence to design and patent multiple products. You know, it was through their example that they taught me life lesson one, which was you can basically do anything you set your mind to. Life lesson two, the power of becoming resilient. Resilient, able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. If you expect to attempt something really challenging like an engineering or STEM degree, uh, you can't be someone who is influenced easily by setbacks and challenging conditions. If you talk to any current or past engineering student about the obstacles that they faced while they were in school, then you will undoubtedly hear about some terrible exam scores and some overwhelming workloads. And it's your resiliency that will carry you through that stuff, that will pick you up after bad exam scores and keep you grinding as the work keeps piling on. And how resilient you are will be especially important if you're someone like me who really struggled with math and science in the beginning and uh, didn't really have a lot of experience with studying for long amounts of time because in order to catch up to those other kids in my class it was a huge struggle to say the least. I credit a lot of my own resiliency to my high school swimming career where I did a lot of losing. You are one pathetic loser. I was actually a pretty good swimmer and I tended to be one of the fastest on whatever team I was on but my high school team just happened to have one of the fastest kids in a generation swimming the same freaking events as me. Long story short, I learned to lose and be okay with it 
I learned to not let it negatively impact my motivation to keep working hard. So Brooks, if you're watching, I guess thanks for kicking my ass all those years. I think a good quote to sum this one up is you either win or you learn, right? The only way to guarantee your own failure is if you quit. I hope you're liking the video so far. If you are, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you like this stuff and you want more of it, make sure you check out my book. It's called Becoming an Engineer. This book represents everything that I learned and implemented in order to go from a 2.0 my freshman year all the way to a 3.8 and a master's degree in engineering. So make sure you check it out. It's available in paperback, ebook, and I actually just released the audiobook version. I'll put links in the description for everything. Thanks for the support. Life lesson three. Hard work can be one hell of a drug. Whenever you're attempting to accomplish something big, whether it be losing 50 pounds, starting a business, or going for a degree, the amount of work it takes can be pretty daunting. In fact, just the thought of the amount of work is enough to scare most people away. But if you've ever committed to something really big and really pushed and grinded all the way to the end, then you know how fulfilling all of that work can be. Humans aren't always supposed to take the easy road. It's the opposite, in fact. Our bodies and minds are designed to not only be able to withstand difficult things, but to thrive and grow in the face of challenging experiences. Wow. If you've ever worked really hard on something over a long period of time, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that constant struggle, you know, the daily grind of you working toward that goal you want, toward that thing you're trying to accomplish. It can become kind of addicting, you know? It, it makes you feel alive in its own weird way. Eventually, you might, you know, become addicted to the work itself. Uh, you fall in love with the challenge of what you're doing. Regardless of the outcome, regardless of how it all ends up, the challenge and the work that you put in is where the value is. And it was through my athletic career that I actually learned this lesson as well. You know, the more I practiced, the more seasons I went through, the more I swam, the more my motivation to keep doing it kind of evolved. You know, at the beginning it was all about racing and times and, and your ranking, right? Um, but toward the end, you know, I, I had made it all the way up to Division I college swimming. And by that point, it wasn't really about how fast I was going. It wasn't about my times um, for me. My motivation came from just the workouts themselves, just pushing my body to its limits every day in the pool. It became kind of, you know, a drug for me. It became just the high itself. It, it, it became kind of a part of who I was. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, you know, swimming practices are not like basketball or football practices where you work on plays and specific skills. Once you get past a certain level in swimming, the only way that you can get better is to continually beat the shit out of yourself in the pool until you become faster, stronger, and more pain tolerant. Really what I'm saying is all competitive swimmers are a little bit masochistic. If you're a swimmer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Life lesson four, regret is way worse than failure. Besides being intimidated by hard work, the other reason people don't take on big challenges or take big risks is because they're afraid of failure. What did you say? People think that if there's any risk of not succeeding or, you know, maybe damaging your ego, then it's just not worth trying in the first place. You know, in my opinion, there are two main issues with this mentality. The first being that there's no thought given to the value of the journey itself. You know, people get so preoccupied with the fear of failure that they don't acknowledge the massive amount of benefit that lies in the honest attempt at success. So regardless of outcome, you know, it's the journey, the process, you know, the commitment to the work that will be the true prize in the end because those are the things that will really change who you are for the better. You know, before I get on my soapbox and keep going on this, I've actually done a longer video on this exact idea and I'll just link for that one in the description. The second issue with letting your fear of failure dictate your decision making is the simple question, what if? That question, what if, right, has the power to eat at you and eat at you and eat at you, right? What if I had tried my hardest? What if I had taken that opportunity? You know, what if I hadn't played it so safe? Those are the types of questions that over time can turn into the worst feeling of all, in my opinion, and that's regret. So if you ask me, it's always better to try and fail 
than to never try at all because then at least in the attempt you gain a lot of good experience and you have a clear conscience that is not plagued by regret. So I personally learned this lesson in the summer of 2007 when I decided to move to Long Island, New York to try my hand at door-to-door -door sales. What an idiot. <laughs> oh, what a loser. Oh man, that was a pretty tough summer. You know, knocking doors and actually trying to sell was, was pretty rough. Um, but it was the people I met and the conversations I had where I learned a lot. You know, I knocked hundreds of doors and I met dozens of people every day. And it was through all those conversations and all those people that I talked to that I kind of realized that people tend to live with a lot of regret. I wish I would have quit smoking. I wish I spent more time with my kids. I wish I spent more time with my spouse, you know. I wish I would have finished school. I know that sounds kind of weird, like I'm knocking on people's doors and they're just telling me this stuff. But once you get past, or once I would get past the fact that they're not going to buy anything from me, I would just enjoy talking to them and getting to know them. So it was through talking to people and hearing kind of the same thread over and over that it really sunk in for me. And that is regret is way worse than failure. So once that summer was over, I came home and I switched my major from communication to engineering. And I really had no reason to expect to actually graduate in engineering, but that wasn't really what mattered. It, what mattered was that it was what truly interested me and I knew I would regret it if I did at least try. So to sum this one up, you shouldn't spend your life avoiding failure, but you should spend it avoiding regret. Life lesson five, you can get smarter and more mentally capable through mental exercise. A lot of people think that your mental capabilities, you know, your IQ are something that's set in stone. That if you struggle with math or science or language, then you always will, right? Well, that's just not true. Through consistent mental exercise and stimulation, your brain and mind will compensate by forming new neural pathways and strengthening ones that already exist. The end result is you become smarter and more capable in the areas you need to. There's actually a word for this, and it's neuroplasticity. And I've done a longer video kind of going more in depth about what neuroplasticity is and how you can use it to your advantage. I'll put a link for that one in the description. So if you want to know more, go check that one out. So the first time I experienced the magic of neuroplasticity was the summer of 2009. And it was the end of my sophomore year in college and I was struggling big time. I think my GPA was like 2.3 at the time. Oh. My classes were getting harder and harder and harder. And if I didn't figure out something quick, there was no way I was gonna graduate. And I had just failed thermodynamics one, so I had to retake it that summer. And I knew something had to change because clearly my approach towards school wasn't really working out so far. So I made a commitment to myself where I would give it my absolute all. I wanted to be able to say at the end of that summer that I honestly could not have tried harder to pass thermodynamics. And then if I failed again, then maybe engineering just wasn't for me. Uh, but at least I could take some comfort in the knowledge that I completely tried as hard as I could to pass that course. So I basically dedicated that entire summer to just passing thermodynamics. I sat my ass down and read the textbook until I understood every freaking page. And if I had questions, I'd email my professor or go to their office hours until I had all my questions answered. I would actually start my homework on the day it was assigned, I know crazy, uh, so I could get any questions answered and actually learn and absorb the material. And I would dedicate at least three to four days of just pure study time prior to every exam. So I ended up getting an A- in the class and it was because I forced my brain to adapt and get stronger in the areas I needed it to. So because I had developed and kind of found my recipe for success, I actually never failed a course again and I increased my GPA all the way to a 3.8. And so because I had proven to myself that I was capable of succeeding in these hard courses, all my excuses for failure just evaporated. So there you have it. Those are the five most important lessons that I learned to go from being a big dumb jock to earning a master's degree in engineering. So to recap, we had lesson one, you can do anything you set your mind to. Lesson two, the power of becoming resilient. Lesson three, hard work can be one hell of a drug. Lesson four, regret is always worse than failure. And lesson five, you can actually make yourself smarter and more mentally capable through neuroplasticity. That's it for now. Let me know if you guys have any questions or thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to check the description for the videos that I referenced and for a link to my book. 
But until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.